Amen. Our God is a good God, is he not? Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together again for Jesus. He is certainly worthy of all praise and glory. Amen. And please help me reverence, respect, and give honor to the greatest apostolic leader that we know on this side of heaven, Apostle William T. Ford. An apostle's apostle, or pastor's pastor's, a teacher's teacher. I am absolutely honored and better as a result of God giving me the privilege and opportunity to sit under his tutelage. Amen. I'm a product of his restoration, his love, and also his rebuke. So I just want to make sure. <laughs> Amen. But I, I honor this man of God highly, and I appreciate the fact that God used him to help me to become the best version of myself. I want to honor Pastor Glendora in her absence, every leader, every elder, every minister, that all the doctors, we honor you. And of course, I want to honor my girlfriend, and he'll sit in the front right here. Apostle Regina, we want to honor you. We want to honor you. We want to go right to the word of God, but prior to that, let, let us pray. Can you please grab uh, your brother's and sister's hand, if you don't mind, ma'am, sir? Precious Father, we come now in the name of Jesus, just saying that we thank you. Father, we thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your kindness. Father, we thank you for your grace, and we thank you that your mercies that was new this morning, even before we even got up. Now, Father, the neighbor's hand that I hold, I squeeze victory into the hand of that neighbor. I squeeze peace into the hand of that neighbor. Being that this is the last Sunday, the last year, God, I squeeze closure into the hand of my neighbor. That whatever they went through, they'll never have to go through again. This will not follow them. God, I squeeze breakthrough. I am a high. I am a I squeeze restoration and I squeeze healing. I squeeze deliverance. I squeeze uplifting. I squeeze confidence. I squeeze all about destiny into the hand of my neighbor in the name of the Father, I thank you now because I believe in agreement, Father. I agree. I can't come out until they come out. Hotel Lamosha. I can't win until they win. Hotel Lobo. I can't go up without them going up. Hotel Lobo. So one more time, squeeze that neighbor's hand. Hotel Lobo. If you never felt a miracle, squeeze it. Squeeze it. If you never felt a breakthrough, squeeze it. If you if you never heard the Monday, squeeze. Yeah, Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. We bless you now, Father. We give your name praise and glory. Help me to decrease that the spirit of Christ will increase. None of me, all of you, no flesh on parade. We speak death to the flesh that the spirit may flow. Father, do what only you can do. We give you glory for it now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout, please. Hallelujah. It is so. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, please, we'll be extracting one scripture in your hearing. That will be from the book of Mark. Mark chapter number five and verse number 28. Primarily when we hear this passage, this biblical narrative, we oftentimes hear it preached from the concept of the woman's faith. But God specifically told me to do something different. We want to talk about the woman's favor. Mark chapter number five, beginning at verse number 28, which will be our only verse. And it says, for she said, I want you to understand this dialogue. There was no one giving her instructing what to say, how to say it, when to say it, or even for that part, where to say it. For she said, if I 
may touch but this close I shall be whole we want to teach a few minutes in, in your hearing the lesson entitled the dark side of favor and we want to subtopic this I refuse to stay like this you may be seated in the presence of the Lord the dark side of favor subtopic I refuse to stay like this now I am a builder and if you don't mind I'm going to take my time for a few minutes but there is something extremely extraordinary hid within the passage of the scripture and what we need to fail, realize is as believers oftentimes, when we say we want God's favor we say it without truly understanding that all that favor entails. I believe favor from God's perspective requires all of us uh, to go through times we have been discarded, we have been disappointed, and in many cases we have been disliked. It may make you hide in a cave like David. It may make you be dropped in a pit like Joseph. It may cause you to battle and want to die like Elijah. It may cause you to be beat like Paul. It may cause you to be stoned like Stephen. And most, most definitely, it may cause you to be betrayed like Jesus. But we say we want favor. And what we need to understand, favor is never accompanied without process. Because God would always put the appropriate process in place to accompany the favor that he's going to release upon our lives. And process does three significant things. Number one, it prepares us. Number two, it prunes us. And number three, it produces something within us. Process causes us to be, watch this, put in painful predicaments only to reveal hidden potential. Let me say it again. It, it will cause you to be put in painful predicaments only to reveal hidden potential. Uh, let me give you some examples. You do remember Joseph, don't you? You do. In Genesis chapter number 37, because Joseph describes his favor, and Joseph in describing his favor, because like most of us, when we hear favor, it triggers enthusiasm. It triggers a degree of incitement because I'm being favored, and because I'm being favored, we just understand that Favor also comes with a fight. Please prophesy to your neighbor and say you might get the favor. But please understand with the favor there's going to come a fight. And so we must understand that any time that God begins to announce that he's going to give favor to your life, you don't know what direction the fight going to come from. Because if God's going to really use you to be an instrument of favor, you've got to understand that God will use, watch this, your suffering as a sacrificial seed for somebody else's success. Let me say it again. He will use your suffering as a sacrificial seed for somebody else's success. In other words, process will always require, here it is, number one, for you to die first. Uh, please touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, I know God did it, but he did. When, when, watch this. Why is loving you killing me? He will put, he will, because God will use your life and guilt you to be the instrument of impact. But in God making you the instrument of impact, first of God, God will summon situations, sufferings, circumstances, and conditions, and even conflicts, and put you right in the middle of it, and then tell you, don't you say a word. So we hear favor, but we never deal, we never think about the dark side of favor. Joseph is excited. Normally, like me and you, we would be excited. But he doesn't realize there's a dark side to this, Joseph. You don't understand. Favor will require your family to hate you. Favor will require people that once went with you to now all of a sudden trip on you. Favor will require that the people you started out with to drop you like you a bad habit. Uh, please touch a neighbor and say, do you really want favor?
God will require favor to be on your life so to the point that what God will cause you to be the price oh, for pushing everybody else to their promise. And that's the hurtful thing because even while you pushing everybody else to their promise, watch this, they're pushing you away, they're pushing you down, they're pushing you out, and they're even pushing you off. And they don't realize you don't even understand I'll be your way in. God using me to help you get in and you trying to kill the source of your life. Please prophesy. They didn't want Joseph, but they didn't realize Joe was their way in. But they did everything they can to keep Joseph out. They put him in the pit. They put him in pit. Please touch your neighbor and say, do you know who really is sitting beside you? Uh, I might not have the title, but I got an anointing. I might not be the one preaching, but I got a prophetic word for you. I can help you get out, but because you got personality picks, you're looking on the very one that can help you come out. It's the dark side of favor. We don't think about it when we say favor. Ah! <laughs> of course, it's, it's innate. What we don't understand, we don't understand, and God way the way God begin to process this. We don't often ascertain what it is that God allows uh, is allowing us to become. We become ambiguous as to the things that God have placed in path in our path to only cause us to be produced to become all that the Father desires for us to become. And oftentimes that journey will require that I cry. That journey will require that I hurt. That journey will require that oftentimes I be mishandled, that oftentimes I be misused, that oftentimes I be mis oh God, mistreated, that oftentimes I misunderstood, and really because you don't know my heart anyway, what happens is because you don't know my heart, you miss them, watch this, you don't know how to handle what I have. Please touch a neighbor, say neighbor, you don't know I'm the one praying behind, for you behind the scenes. It's just that I'm not, I'm not public publicizing it. I'm not, I'm not advertising. I'm praying for you. I'm not advertising her because what I'm doing behind the scenes, I'm in tune with heaven. And when heaven gets me up out of my bed, heaven say in the sea. I don't ask questions. I don't go because when you really have the favor of God in you, you have a spirit in you that won't let you quit. So the only way you can fight is in the spirit. It's process that causes us to be put in predicaments only where God says now I must reveal your hidden potential. I really, I really want to show them who you really are. I want to, I want to show them what they missed out on. I want to, I want to show them the vessel and the value that you have. They're so caught up in the package that they're missing out on the precious. The precious is the oil. I am I. They so get caught up in the wrapping, they get messed up with the worth. They're looking at the outside and can't discern what's really inside how can I become better and the reason you can become better is to always learn the lesson about watch this of what you've been through you cannot get better without going through any pain you must be able to learn the lesson oh it was good for me yeah, yeah. let me give you the word that I was afflicted that I might look You are knowing it, but they don't know. Watch this. You hidden in plain sight. This process. This process requires us to, oh, watch this, us that are really truly favored 
to go beyond our feelings because if the truth be told if you really anoint it can I be honest with you you don't feel like preaching all the time matter of fact that sometimes you don't feel like being married you're married though you don't feel like having no children deal with no husband dealing with no wife you like the woman come here. God give me a cow gun moment every time I turn somebody pulling on me who can I pull on who, who, who somebody asking me to pray who who gonna pray for me somebody asking me to borrow money who can I I mean every time I'm trying to bail out for please touch a neighbor and say neighbor it's a process it's the dark side a favor God favor my son you don't know what you're asking favor my husband you don't know what you're asking so we understand we understand that God in this process puts us in place only to prune us for where it is he already knows we're going to end up because you must understand towards your destination towards the place that God has deemed that you will arrive there are certain watch this there are certain points there are certain uh, encounters there are certain storms that you have to face on the way there before Jesus began to wait, before I text into my text, before Jesus met this woman, it was interesting what had transpired on the way to her. On the way to her, he stops by and peeps in on a man who's going through a storm. And the man that's going through a storm, we know him, his name is Peter. Jesus is there, right there, popping, stopping by, checking on him while he's going through the storm. And as soon as Jesus leaves, he leaves a storm. Watch this. He leaves a process. He leaves the storm. Then as soon as he steps out, he's in the city of gatherings and he deals with the man possessed with a demon. So I'm, what, I, what am I saying? I'm saying as soon when you're in process, as you get finished with one thing, you write back into something else. How is it, uh, you know, he's dealing with a man possessed with a demon. In other words, a lunatic. I mean, crazy stuff. How is it before I can get out of this storm, huh, the first thing I look, walk into is something crazy. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, uh, uh, how is it that while I'm in this right here and I'm thinking God going to deliver me out, uh, the first thing I walk into is some more craziness. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, do you got anything crazy going on in your life? You're in some situation right now and the first thing you have to deal with, you already in a storm. But before you can get out there or get a breather, before you can say thank you, Jesus, before you can blink your eyes good, now I turn around and I'm dealing with some crazy stuff. I touch a neighbor, say, neighbor, you know you didn't raise your son like this, crazy. You know you didn't deal with your daughter like this, crazy. You know you didn't teach them to be like that, crazy. Before you step out of one thing, you get a call and you say to yourself, my God, this is some crazy stuff. Being processed from one point to the other. So we're dealing with 12. We're dealing with 12. A 12 year old girl and a woman that's dealing with a 12 year dilemma. And Jesus, <laughs> with his wise self, comes and he deals with it's something significant about. 12. I want to talk about it for a few minutes. Can I, can I talk about it for a few minutes? See, when, when you look at 12, the Jew, Jewish and the Hebrew numerology system place great accentuation and value on numbers. And however, there were some numbers that was more imperative or much more significant than others. These numbers have great symbolic significance. 
the number 12 was one of these numbers and, and you know how it was there were 12 disciples that, that later became 12 apostles there were, there were 12 spies that went out to the land of Canaan there were 12 tribes of Israel the, the high priest had 12 precious stones embedded on the breastplate Jesus' first word was spoken at age 12 there were 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament 12 historical books in the Bible there were 12 angels that were assigned to manage the gates of the heaven and, 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 and watch this and each gate having been named after 12 tribes so there was a significance in this number 12 because 12 symbolized totality it, it symbolized something hearing me now is about to come to a closure so it's, it's, by, it's interesting how Jesus shows up when he shows up because he's trying to bring something to an end he's about to close some doors in order for him to open some others I've come to tell somebody since we're in the last Sunday of the last year I came to tell you there's some things that God has been sanctioned that I'm going to close in your life that they watch this that they cannot leak over prophesy to your neighbor say neighbor God is about to close some stuff so they cannot leak over into what God has prepared for your 2020. You do understand 2020 is clarity. 2020 is vision. 2020 is insight. 2020 is the ability to see beyond where you've been that you can see into where God has called you to go. He says 12, 12, 12. It's the number I'm going in this cycle. I'm going to bring this stuff to closure. Now we begin to watch this, to step into our text right here. The first thing I see in this text that intrigued me, Apostle Paul, was the woman got so tired, she got tired of bargaining with her own bondage. I tell your neighbor, number one, if you're going to go into 2023, you got to get tired of bargaining with your own bondage. What do you mean, McNeil? Well, when you bargain with your own bondage, it simply suggests that you went through stuff so much, you embraced a spirit where you just settle. Oh, I'm here to tell you, God never calls you to settle. He called you to soar. Why is it that you go, why you must ask yourself, single woman, why are you attracting the same type of men? Could it be you left some stuff open that you never closed and you made up in your mind, I'm just going to settle. Oh, why is it, man, that you after the you attract the same type of women could it be that you made up in your mind i'm just going to settle and not soar and stuff is leaking out of you because you don't have confidence in who god called you please tell your neighbor say neighbor i don't need nobody to prophesy to me after all the hell i've been in 2019 that's all the confirmation i need that my father loves me if you never tell me how important I am if you never tell me I'm special if you never tell me I am the one I go to my bathroom look in my mirror and tell myself you one fine negro you one you got it together who in the world wouldn't want to be with you who in the world wouldn't want to date you who in the world I pat myself on the back and say hey let's go out and then I tell myself, yeah, baby, let's do it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Mm. Oh, no, I, got, I can't go there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't, I can't, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so you got to stop bargaining with your own bondage. But what that suggests to Sister, or Elder Ruby is that I get tired. See, God will never move until an individual gets tired. Uh, do I have any tired people in here? Uh, tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm tired of phony folk. I'm tired of people that are only speak to me in church. But when we outside, you act funny. You won't even say hello. And you know you see me. I tell your neighbor, this is the year that I say enough is enough. I refuse to stay this way. So he says, 
He says, you've got to get, you can't, you can't bargain with bondage. I can't, I can't let your opinion talk me out of my promise. I can't let how you treat me make me feel like God don't love me. Or tell your name a name it. You got to know that this favor that God's going to give you, you don't have to suck up for it. You don't have to kiss nobody behind. Oh. Here, here's the problem. Now, my, yabosha, yabaha. So here's the problem when you when you're struggling when you're struggling with bondage what it does bondage causes you to buy watch this buy into the suggestions of your symptoms Y'all didn't hear what I said bondage quick call causes you to buy into the suggestions of your symptoms and what happens is just because you got the symptoms hey neighbor that don't mean you got the sickness oh so grab your neighbor and say neighbors stop letting the wrong people speak over you what they're doing is transferring what they got trying to put it on you just because you don't love yourself good god don't don't try to make me feel like i'm arrogant because I finally got the confidence to love myself. Here it is. She got tired of bargaining with her own bondage, and because, and when you bargain with bondage, you let things linger longer than God ever intended. And now, what's happening is you begin to produce, watch this, a dysfunctional reality. Mm, yeah. And now, the ones that's really trying to help you, you don't really see that the one you're running from is the one you really need to be running to. Because watch this, they not gonna pacify your symptoms. They gonna point out your sickness. So here it is, here it is. She says a problem because she been going to the doctor this 12 years. And Ruby, every time she went to the doctor, I would have been all right when I read this. But when I read these words, something popped up in my spirit. It said when she went to the doctor, Apostle, she grew worse. Oh, here it is, here it is. A touch of neighbor, say neighbor. Just because you got a title, just because you got a position, before you lay your hands on me, please make sure God laying his hand on you. Because with what I'm dealing with, I can't afford to be worse. I, with what I'm dealing with, I can't afford my struggle and your struggle too. With what I'm dealing with, I have to have a maid of mine and not a master of mine. I, with what I'm dealing with, I got to evaluate. I got to look at. I got to study. Is that really from God? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, favor will push me towards my future and will cause me to finish strong. He says, he says, he says, it's something now, apostle, has lingered that we can see by the natural eye by this scriptural narrative. So that, that makes me think what's really lingering is something that was absorbed, watch this, by the wrong hands. Uh, please touch a neighbor. Uh, watch the hands that you call your help. Look at the hands. I know we all messed up in some area or another, but the demons I deal with, to cast it out, it won't come through 
dirty hands. A touch a name and say, neighbor, with what I need, it got to be clean hands. I need somebody, watch this, that's not a novice. What I need is a specialist. What do you mean, McNeil? Well, let me find somebody that's got a proven track record. Who is somebody? Somebody maybe by the name of WT4. I heard he was a specialist. A touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, what you dealing with requires a specialist. You need somebody in your life that can help push you through your process to give you access to the next level of growth in your life. What's happening to a lot of people, Apostle Fall, is they're experiencing spiritual gridlock. They stuck. They can't go any further. And it's not because of what's being given to them. It's because something is lingering that they want to deal with. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whatever you do, don't let it linger. Whatever you do, don't let it live. Whatever you do, don't let it stay where God has already evicted it. Why? Are you still trying to invite it? He says, he says, fruit, fruit can only be sown, and fruit can only come from a seed that's been sown. It's the thought that becomes a seed that produces the dysfunctional reality. One's dilemma is either going to go or it's going to grow. Watch this, predicated on the attention that they give to it. What you feed will only fight to remain. So the question then is, how was your appetite? <laughs> so what? Watch this. He's, he says not number two. Your expectation must match, must match your effort. If not, it will result into empty fulfillment. In other words. Many people that we deal with today, they have an anointing called entitlement. That's absent, hear me now, of effort. I can pray for you all day. I can even pinpoint what your issue is. I can tell you how to get out. But what I cannot do is walk in your situation, get in your mind, step in your body, and go get the deliverance that I see you can get, but you don't give the effort to get. Please tell your neighbor, neighbor, stop sucking on me. What the problem is, we got too many leeches in the house of God. We got lazy Christians that don't want to pray, that don't want to call on the name of God, that don't want to read. They say, I want to come out, but you pray for me. I want to be better, but you do it for me. I get the benefit, but you do all the work. Oh, please tell your neighbor, neighbor, with what you dealing with now, God is calling a greater sacrifice. He's calling you to come to the altar. He's calling you to get turn up the fire. He's calling you to get a new passion. He's calling you to get a new drive. He's calling you to get a new desire. He says, you really want favor? Get in my face. gotta have expectation that matches your effort or it will lead to entitlement 
some people stop expecting, therefore they stop experiencing. And then, watch this, what they are expecting, they are experiencing. Because they have more faith in their failures than they do in their future. How do I know? Listen to the dialogue. Listen to how they conversate. You will see what's really on the inside. Most of the time, if you let them, they'll give you the answer themselves. If you just have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Number three. You can't let chaos become comfortable confinement. You can't let chaos. The woman was going through all types of chaos. Please understand because she was going through what she was going through, she wasn't even supposed to be out. She was supposed to stay in. And, and, but, but, but let me tell you something. When you're really desperate, you say, God, I don't care who see me today. What I got, I'm asking you to do it. They can say what they want to say. God, I'm coming to see you. And I can't be confined by my chaos. I'm going through in the marriage chaos. I'm going through in the job chaos. I'm going through in my body chaos. I'm going through in my mind chaos. But God, I can't be confined. And God will see and watch and test you. Watch this, your desperation. Because desperation is what's going to open the door. I tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you really want it, the question is, how desperate are you to have it? Because comfortable confinement, listen to me now, only caters to carnal convenience. To break any cycle will require, will require sincere submission. See, some of us, we think folk don't know it. But they know you operate, here it is, in false submission. You just show up, but you ain't with me. <laughs> you just here, but you ain't with me. <laughs> you, 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 you around, but you ain't with me. You, you, you just show up. I see you, but the only reason I'm not saying anything because God is putting me on mute mode. God will say, don't you say nothing. I'm going to deal with this by myself. I'm going to show them who you really are. Don't you say nothing. You know how it is when you know for a surety you're around a snake and you know your spirit is cringing but the Holy Ghost said stand still close your mouth go ahead and ask them how they doing you know when you're around a witch and a warlock you know when you're around a liar you know when you're around somebody that's a trip you know you know but the Holy Ghost will say hold your peace This blew my mind. The Holy Ghost told me this. He says, McNeil, your participation, hear me now, will always influence your process. Watch this. But it will also expedite or hold up your exit. She participated with what Jesus already wanted to do for her. Notice now Jesus didn't do anything. The woman said, if I <laughs> touch a neighbor and say, neighbor, there are some things that only you anointed to break in your household. And God is waiting for you to speak the word. 
into your environment but here's the problem instead of most of us speaking the word we're so overwhelmed at the moment we begin to speak the worst and because we begin to speak the worst words are a creative force and because words are a creative force whatever we speak begins a force we have to reckon with because we released it in our environment God gave us the jurisdiction over our environment tell your neighbor say neighbor you got rank and you got power and you got authority your thing is you got to know how to use what you've been given God prepared you God pruned you now God is looking around and said when are you going to produce I send you here to get a word to launch your life to the next level grab your name and say neighbor I know you might be tired but whatever you do make up in your mind I'm not gonna stay like this that's what that woman did she said if I just touch the hem of his garment then I I shall be made whole grab your name and say I sense a shifting about to take place in your life I sense some things coming to a close those that mishandled you gonna have to come back and say surely the anointing of God was on your life surely the power of God was on your life tell your neighbor neighbor I cried and I cried but I heard Jesus say weeping and doing by the night grab your neighbor say I feel it now but joy come in the morning tell your neighbor neighbor I see a door to a new dimension I see a gateway to a new glory I see a ladder to another level God is about to take me up grab your neighbor and say neighbor come out with your hands up come out saying God I surrender I give you my child I give you my wife I give you my family God I surrender I give you my mind because you told me this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it and then you told me oh magnify the Lord with me grab your neighbor say neighbor with me and let us exalt his name together and then you told me fret not thyself because of evil doers and need to be in this of the workers and then you told me no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper did you told me greater 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 is he in me than he that's in the world tell your neighbor neighbor I feel a praise in my belly because I refuse to be like this on the count of three if you'll help me help somebody else give them a praise give them a shabak one two three come on lift your balls lift it lift it pull 
your neighbor out. Pull your brother out. Your praise is linked to somebody's freedom. Your praise is linked to somebody's breakthrough. Your praise is linked to somebody coming out. Your praise is linked to somebody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Higher. Higher, Hoto. Shabba. Break it. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Break it. Come on. 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 The last Sunday. Close it. Close up in victory. I'm going out. Come on. I feel. I feel. Your power. I refuse. Pastor, I refuse to take another loss. Prophesy to somebody. And I refuse to take another loss. The devil gonna have to let go of my son, my daughter, my grandchild, everything assigned to my life. I refuse. Oh, oh, you got to get an attitude with the devil. You can't let the devil punk you out your breakthrough. You can't. You got to take it by four. It's your turn and it's your time. Hosha, Yaba. Hosha. Apostle, Fable met her in her personal fire. Fable is not on you, Fable is in you. No folk were talking when she was out. So there had to be an inner strength. I want you, I'm gonna paint a picture so you can see. She had to have an inner. She wasn't deaf. She heard the echoes. She heard what they were saying about her around town. But she had a power. This is how God wants us to be. To hear it, to see it, but walk on by it. And then walk with an attitude. Because apostle, this is what God said. I was never going to move this woman's problem. This is what God told me. He says, I was anointing her problem to move her. You talking about God, do something with his husband. God says, no, I'm going to do something with you. God, do something with this child. God says, no, I'm going to do something with you. Because you wouldn't pray the way you prayed unless I use somebody close to you. Oh, God. And I'm such a God, I want to protect my relationship with you. I won't let nothing violate. So I use the closest thing to you. I use your husband. I use your son. I use your wife. I use your daughter. Because I understand the favor is in you. Got to be a lot for somebody else. She came to the conclusion. refuse to stay this way. Jesus didn't come and help her. No, he didn't. Jesus didn't come and grab her and pull her out and say, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Jesus, watch this, kept doing his assignment. He knew where she was. 
He knew what her condition was. He knew what her state was. But what Jesus was saying to her woman, in his mind, he said, come on, faith was in you. <laughs> Unlock it. <laughs> Tap into it. You got the word. The word been in you. I gave you dreams. I showed you who it was going to be. I showed you how you was going to come out. But you're so focused on what you see, you don't focus what you need to see. Because faith is the substance of things and the evidence of things not seen, but we could equate faith to what we see. It's not seen. It's there. They don't see it. It's not seen. Why? It's in you. Yeah. This is why. Thank you, Rose. This is why, Bishop, as soon as she contacted the right source, Jesus turned. I mean, I'm around people. But watch now. Her expectation in the process was different from the beginning of the process. It grew. And because it grew, what was in Jesus grabbed her. <laughs> if you really study, text you, if you really study, the woman was in fetal position. This is how she was. I'm going to use a post. The woman, this is how she was. Look at me now. This is how she was. She was in fetal position. But matter of fact, she was like, That signifies something. What that signifies to us to God? She's in birthing mode. Jesus would never put in our hand what he know we can't handle in our heart. He will wait for us, watch this, to get in the appropriate posture. Not, listen to me, not the appropriate position. Because you can be in position and not in posture. Everybody around Jesus, hear me, around Jesus was in position. Y'all missing it. They were in position. But she was in posture. Now let me tell you this. Through God, posture will always trump position. Because I'm always looking at the truth of your heart not the toxicity of your title. Some folk can't handle titles. They were good before you became elder. They were good before they became bishop. They were good. They served God. They blessed God. But because process prepared her, process pruned her, and process Produced the oil that was necessary for her to function the way in which God intended for her to function. What in your life have you allowed to linger too long that is causing you to leak? What in your life that you really have not given God absolutely and total control over. That's hindering your true potential and your purpose. God's not after data. He's not after intel. He's not after all information. He doesn't want to talk about what well, Lord, they did this, they did that. They he only wants one thing, posture. Some of you lost your posture of prayer. You were intimate with God. You get up, you will spend hours and night with God and get lost in prayer. You would hear him clearly. 
but something happened that lingered. I want to pray for you today. I'm, I'm through. I want to pray for you today. I want you to put your title down. I want you to put your gift down. I'm not, I'm not disregarding your title, disrespecting. That's not who I am. But there is no way for the mandate on this house, this leader in this city, the mandate on your life or who it is God called you to be in the kingdom and the effect that God wants you to have in this region, not just here, throughout wherever you go. Today, God wants to bury some stuff. He wants to eulogize it. Because he can't, you can't afford to let it accompany you into 2020. This call for here right now is for those that know God, there's some areas I'm still leaking. Will you be honest? Come on. Come on wherever you are. There's some folk that hurt me, and I don't know how to let them go. There's some folk that violated my trust. I want to trust, but I don't know how to trust. I don't mean to be bitter. I mean to be mean. I don't mean to be resentful, but God... I can't afford to take this in the 2020. I don't want to do anything to hinder my husband, to hinder my wife, to hinder my apostle, to hinder Pastor Glendor, to hinder the elders, to hinder the ministers, to hinder my children. Lord, today I'm coming empty. Today I'm not coming calling names. I'm coming to do be like that woman, certain. I'm the certain one that needs help. That needs healing. Come on, I want you to be in the right posture. Lift your hands, close your eyes.